Okay, so we're gonna be doing something a little bit different this time. Um, so that system right there, I'm supposed to be building, uh, but a computer that I actually built for someone else um, last year, I think. It was a gaming computer that I built. It was a gift, I think, for their birthday. Uh, her name was Monica, if anyone cares. Uh, there's a video that you can watch here, I think. Anyway, so she has brought that back because the system is not working. Now, I'm not entirely sure what's wrong with this thing, and this is what it is, by the way. It's a uh, 2400G, and uh, that's really it. So this is I put in here for testing because I thought there might be like an overheating issue with the processor. Um, but now uh, I've done some troubleshooting already um, on this system, this particular system. So I've pretty much narrowed it down to either this uh, SSD or the processor itself. And I think it's the processor. So what we're going to do now that this is here is we are going um, to like this literally just got delivered today. So we're going to stick this in her computer and see what happens and hopefully all goes well. Um, so some of the things I did off camera, I actually did swap all of these components that you see here, except for this uh, Wi-Fi card. Uh, I put that RAM in her system to see if it was a RAM issue. That checked out. Uh, I tried a different power supply. This is why this is opened. That checked out. Um, I tried a different motherboard with you know the same CPU, the same RAM, pretty much everything in here, the SATA SSD, like literally everything that's in here. I try it on that motherboard and still no worky. So it freezes, uh, we get into the window screen. And I think uh, that can only be, you know, two possible things. So, and I also did try and stick this into uh, my gaming computer, but for whatever reason, my gaming computer couldn't see it. So I'm still not able to confirm if it's a SATA SSD problem or if it's a processor, but we're, we're literally about to find out. So let's, let's go and do it and stop talking about it. All right, so. The other system will be getting a 2600, uh, which I picked off Amazon for $119 with a $10 um, promotion credit. So it's actually $109. Uh, and this is for the other system. It's not intended for this build here, um, but we can at least see if we can boot using this CPU. Take a look real quick. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but there it is, a 2600X for $109. Uh, and this is just, this is supposed to be just for a gaming PC. Uh, originally I had picked out the 2600, but I had lots of shipping issues. And then, um, you know, the, the CPUs didn't even get delivered. So, and they got shipped back to Cinder or whatever the hell. I don't know, it was a mess, but I finally got this in and now I'm, um, really excited and the person who's receiving this is going to be even more happy because they're getting a really nice CPU just for gaming. So I think anybody watching, you know, a tech channel at this point has probably seen a CPU being removed for the hundredth millionth time or more. Uh, so I know this isn't really that interesting. Wow, that does not sound good. I know it's not really that interesting, um, but nonetheless, I kind of just wanted to show it. So here I am unscrewing and then we'll skip ahead to the actual removal part. All right, nice and clean. Let's go ahead and remove this. Oh yeah, I forgot it. It's got this like cool locking mechanism now. All right, so I set the 2400G off to the side and we're just gonna slip in the 2600. That apparently put that in the wrong way. <laughs> so we're gonna flip it. Okay, that's not the right way either. I think I had it the right way first time. There we go. All right. And let's put some thermal goop on this brand new CPU. Should be plenty. I think I put a little too much to be honest. Let's stick back on our heat sink. All right, so we're gonna boot up the system. We got power, it turned on. So now what's most peculiar about this system is it will actually boot into Windows, uh, but it typically locks up once we're inside of Windows, um, which is very strange. Uh, so that's kind of what leads me to think that it might be 
a, a SATA problem, like maybe there's something wrong with the device. Um, but it also could very well be the processor, especially after all the testing I previously did. So, okay, cool. Well, I'm just, I, I was going to get in the BIOS, but I think I'm just going to let it try and boot into Windows and see what happens. So normally if you just open up Firefox, this thing crashes pretty close to right away. All right, so something I tried to previously, okay, what's going on here? That, that's odd, okay. So something I tried to previously do is actually install some BIOS updates. Um, and I couldn't do this before. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to do this now. We'll give it a whirl, see what happens. Uh, okay, so I guess we'll open up Firefox. Uh, we don't have internet. Hang on a second. So it hasn't crashed yet, so I think that's good. And also one of the things that was happening last time is, um, so her background would actually be like mostly gray, which doesn't look like that's happening uh, now. Uh, so we're gonna go to Gigabyte's website and see if we can download some drivers. Uh, B450, wait, is this a 450? Ooh, I don't remember what motherboard this is. All right, so apparently Gigabyte has made it pretty much impossible to update the BIOS through Windows. Um, so I'm doing it through USB, which is the first time I've ever installed drivers via USB. I don't know if that's good or bad, um, but it was pretty simple, thank God. Uh, so we are updating to not the latest BIOS that's available, but uh, one of the newer ones. And uh, it looks like um, we're probably just going to do small increments of BIOS updates until we get to the latest and greatest. So this is actually going to take quite some time. And uh, I'm not looking forward to it. So I'll just cut back maybe to the part where it's working. And um, all the latest drivers and updates are applied to it. Yeah, cool. So not really much to show, but... Um... I did, so the, the previous version was 30, and I've updated to 31 now. Uh, and I'm pretty confident that it was the CPU. So we actually have the old CPU just chilling here. Um, as far as I can tell, there isn't a single bent pen, so I'm not really sure what could have gone wrong with this thing. Um, I'm guessing maybe because it's an APU, the heat um, destroyed uh, something on the inside, not really sure. Um, seems kind of a far-fetched idea to myself, but who knows. Um, so the 2600X is working in here wonderfully. Um, so we're going to have to figure out what we're going to do because we have to get her a graphics card and we also have to get her a new CPU. Um, so I guess I'm going to reach out to her and see what she wants to do. So yeah, I think uh, it's safe to say that this is uh, totally busted. Um, I'm pretty sure it's the CPU. Uh, the case is solved as far as I'm concerned. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that, but I'm pretty sure the case is solved. I, I am going to do some like benchmarks and play some games just to make sure that uh, there isn't another problem. Uh, but considering that we've already tested out other hardware and um, you know had the same freezes and crashing, pretty confident it's her CPU. What I may do after I get all these updates applied is stick her, a her APU back inside and uh and see how that goes but um yeah my, my i have really the hopes so anyway guys i hope you guys appreciated this that's a little bit different than stuff i would normally post because you know it's not really like home lab stuff but you know computers enter the lab and i try to think of a way to connect it all but honestly i just really wanted to get her her computer working um and also back to her as soon as possible so i didn't really do anything to um uh, over the top, I would say. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time, maybe. All right, so we're troubleshooting a computer today and it's not going too well. Now I'm about to uh, test out the RAM and see uh, if maybe swapping the RAM on this thing will get it to boot up so this is the system here and well okay so it does boot up but every time it boots up it freezes and I cannot really see what I'm doing I may have to put this camera down
Come on. There we go. I didn't really get it in the hole. Okay, that's one stick. Uh, so anyway, yeah, every time it gets into Windows, it crashes. And I can't really update the BIOS or anything because, because of that. Wow, why am I having so much difficulty? Am I doing this right? I don't even know how to put this right in, apparently. There we go. So this is gonna be really interesting uh, if we can't get to boot to update BIOS drivers or anything like that, because that could be part of the problem. All right, so it's got turned up. Let's see what happens. Might actually need to use my camera stand here. There we go. And of course it immediately crashed. Um, so we're just gonna say F8, um, I don't know. I don't know what I did. I think I booted a little too quickly there. <clears throat> but let's see. Okay, so we're booting up again because it uh, just booted to a black screen so I wasn't really sure what to do. Uh, so I just mashed the reset button. And... And... Okay, we are in Windows. It hasn't frozen yet. It is taking a little bit here to load. So it sees my RAM, which is good, 16 gigs. At least I could open that. Last time I couldn't even do that. Let's see, downloads. So we're gonna try and update the uh, we're just gonna run this because this 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 has crashed several times now. I don't know what that means. Okay, Explorer has frozen and it's dead. All right, so still frozen. Um, so initially I thought maybe it was overheating because this is an APU. It's a 2400G. So I was thinking maybe the APU and the GPU uh, that were there was overheating the CPU, causing crashing. Change out the RAM. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so we added the, this graphics card here to see if uh, maybe that would help alleviate some of that. And we disabled the, or just dis, dis, would help with the heat. Um, and we also disabled the onboard APU. Uh, so that way all that heat sink is taking away as much heat as possible just from the CPU itself. Um, I keep saying APU, but I mean GPU, the onboard GPU. So that doesn't seem to be a problem. Heat doesn't seem to be an issue. Changing the RAM. Uh, didn't seem to help at all. Uh, so I guess now we are going to try a motherboard first, or I'm sorry, a power supply first. And if the power supply works, um, then I think it would be golden. But if it doesn't, then we're going to try the motherboard, which is going to be the last ditch effort here. All right, we got our power supply jerry rigged in here. So it's actually not powering. There's two SATA devices in here. I don't know if you guys can see, it's probably poor lighting. There's two SATA devices in here and SSDs actually that aren't getting power. Uh, but I think that'll be okay for our tests because uh, we just need to stay in Windows uh, long enough um, to do something with it. So uh, I'll report back. So it's not looking good. Probably not a power supply issue considering that it booted up like this. Uh, so we're just going to try again, see what happens. I'm starting to think it's not power supply. All right, we're back. Sorry for shaky cam here, guys. I am one-handing this. Uh, so all we had to do, so you can see the, the two, or the, the uh, SSDs are missing here. It's to be expected. I'll try and launch this again. Okay, didn't crash this time, uh, but that wouldn't let me install it, so. Let's try something else. It's kind of risky. We're trying to do a BIOS update. Um, well, it didn't crash. 
It also didn't kick off, so I'm not sure what that means. Uh, I guess I'll check back in. All right, and of course, as soon as I open Firefox, the whole system crashes. Uh, the mouse isn't moving, as you can probably tell. I can't do anything, so uh, I guess that means we have to try a different motherboard and see what happens. That's not gonna be fun. Oh well, here we go. So that other uh, motherboard is a Gigabyte motherboard. That's uh, a DSH3, I think. Uh, so we're gonna try out the MSI B450. This is a newer board, the other one's a, a B350. Um, so I fully expect this one to work. And I'm not sure how I'm gonna troubleshoot the old one if that is the issue. Uh, but I'm confident the B450 will end up working. Um, so we're just going to literally just rip this thing open. I'm gonna have to put the camera down and we're gonna set it up. We're gonna move that computer over there. We're gonna set this up and uh, get it going, see what happens. All right, we got the majority of the components back. CPU's installed, uh, 2400G, uh, same SATA drive and the same RAM. So let's plug it up and see what happens. So I forgot to show it, but it looks like um, the motherboard wasn't the issue. So we're gonna take a look at the uh, SATA SSD. And so what I've done is stuck it in here because we're gonna try and save whatever data we can off of it. And uh, then reinstall Windows and see if that fixes it. And if that doesn't, then we'll just have to replace the NVMe drive and see if that fixes it. Fixes it. Um, Cause that's pretty much the last thing I could think of um, that could be broken with this machine because uh, this SATA device was in both uh, both of the different systems and we still had the same exact Windows freezing issue. Um, so all eyes are on you, Samsung 9 or 860 Evo. See what happens. Okay, so the SATA SSD is not showing up in Windows. So I'm downloading the media creation tool and we're gonna install Windows on this hard drive uh, and then plug in that SATA SSD back into its motherboard to see if we can retrieve any of the data that's important on there. Uh, but it might not matter because uh, we're gonna be booting to this anyway. Uh, and then once we, once we get off the data onto this hard drive, uh, then we will install on that SSD, this Windows 1903 edition, uh, and it'll all be in there and then we'll try and boot from the SSD at that point and then we will see what happens. Hopefully everything boots up perfectly fine. 